over on Patreon I asked all of my subscribers what they struggled with on their guitars and Laura got in touch with me and she said strumming. Not so much strumming patterns but rather getting a nice sound to the strum with and without a pick. So Laura and everyone else watching this video is for you. Here are seven tips to get the best out of your strumming. Tip number one keep your hand moving to keep your playing smooth. So what I want to do is have a constant hand movement and what that will achieve is a nice smooth and kind of fluent and natural sound to your guitar playing. As an example, what we're going to do is pick a chord, I'm going to play an E major chord and I'm going to have down and up strokes alternating and my hand is going to constantly move. There's going to be no pauses, no skips with my hand. Watch this. And what I'm doing, if we imagine that we have four beats in the bar, what I'm going to do is downstroke on all of those four beats like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, as you're probably aware, we can strum in between those numbers. I like to call them ands. And on those ands, I'm going to strum up. You can have it like this. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Now what that does, it helps create a nice smooth motion and a smoother sound. For example, if I do all of that again with downstrokes, it's going to sound quite choppy and a bit unnatural and it's going to cause my hand a little bit of pain after a while. So watch this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now as much as that didn't sound necessarily bad, it didn't sound as smooth or as fluent as. So alternating and having that hand moving can help us have a nice smooth sound. And on the screen, what I've got is a rhythm where I've took out some of those beats, some of the ands, but the strumming still stays the same. For those strong beats, one, two, three, and four, I still have down strokes, and for the ands, I have up strokes. And we get something like this. So I've got a mixture of down, 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 up, down, which really helps keep the smoothness going. However, if I were to do that all with downstrokes, again, it just doesn't sound as nice. You can hear it sounds a little bit disjointed. It doesn't sound natural or professional. Equally, if I do all upstrokes, it doesn't sound great. That was genuinely me trying to make it sound nice as well, all with upstrokes, and it, it doesn't sound as good as. And all the way through that, you see my hand is just constantly moving, even when it's not strumming. I'll play that slowly, and you'll still say I have these upstrokes or even downstrokes where I'm not strumming, it's just motion. So an even strumming pattern with constant motion really helps. Now, if you are a Patreon subscriber of mine, then I've got some extra tips and some extra exercises that follow what we've just looked at uh, in a separate video. Feel free to check that out. More about Patreon later on in the video. Tip number two, dynamics and accents. So dynamics is just a fancy word for volume and the change in volume in music. And it's one of the things that a lot of people forget about. They try and think, oh, that's, let's get the right chord. Let's try and get an interesting strumming pattern. And then how you use volume and accents kind of gets put to the side. It's often the last thing we think about and it just adds that little bit extra. It's kind of the, the sprinkling on the cake of sorts. So let's give a few examples. If you were to listen to Train's classic hit, Hey Soul Sister, you'll hear a lot of accents, especially on beats two and four, and it just adds a little bit more to the rhythm. Now, I think that's played on ukulele at the start, but for the purpose of guitar playing, this is what it sounds like with the accents, and then I'll play it without the accents. And then without. Now the second one sounded a little bit more boring, didn't it? It didn't have that punch, it didn't have that energy. And dynamics and accents really give that. 
the energy and just that extra, like I said, that little sparkle. So adding in those to your chord progressions and to your strumming can really help enhance your playing and to make it sound better. Another example is the song by Coldplay called Yellow. The start of the song is a guitar part and it's one chord, technically two chords if you count the extension. It's a B major and a B sus4. But what they do, they accent the chords like this. So hopefully that came across well on the video, but you can hear that sometimes the B chord is being stressed and that just adds a bit of interesting uh, part, kind of element to it. And when they go to the B sus4, which is when that little finger moves, they emphasize that by adding in the accents and changing the volume. If I did that without, again, it just sounds a little bit more dull, a little bit more kind of one dimensional, let's say. So hopefully you could tell that that one maybe doesn't sound as strong. So adding in accents and dynamics works a treat. An example of how to improve your dynamics and your accents is to take a chord progression. Let's just say I'm going to play an E major chord and I'm going to play a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, over and over and over. And for all my downs, I'm going to make it louder. And for my ups, I'm going to make it quieter. I'm going to go slow as well just to kind of help myself through that. So for you beginners out there, that might be a nice tool to use. We could then inverse that for all the upstrokes, the ands of the beats. That could be the louder one. And then mixing and matching can really, really help. Again, my Patreon subscribers will get another video that focuses in on that and I'll give them a few more ideas and a few song suggestions that use these different dynamics. Tip number three. Muting, par muting, and percussive hits. That was a bit of a mouthful. Now, muting and using your guitar in a way that we sometimes don't always strive for is actually quite an interesting tool. No other than Ed Sheeran uses it in quite a lot of his songs. For example, if we listen to Thinking Out Loud, we get this. And my right hand there was sometimes stopping the sound and using the guitar as a bit of a percussive instrument. If you've ever listened to Newton Faulkner, he uses it a ton in his music. Um, and we can use that as well just to enhance our strumming. Sometimes we want smooth strumming. However, with little percussive elements, again, sprinkling on the cake. So to come up with a way of practicing that, pick a chord and just try and go. And we're using that tap just to create a nice element to it and it breaks up the strumming to make it sound more interesting and to create a bit of variety with your strumming. If you just use the same old strumming pattern over and over, it can get quite dull and the listener or whoever is going to find it maybe a bit boring, but a little bit of extra kind of percussive sounds just livens it up again. I'm gonna take it to the extreme by playing a bit of a jazzy kind of lively chord progression. And you're gonna hear some scratches in there as well. That's where I'm doing this type of idea. Have a listen. So here, there was lots of scratching going on. If I did it without, it would sound quite bare and a bit strange. As much as that didn't sound bad, there was something missing, right? So this scratching idea is something that you could put in. Now that was quite an advanced level playing and scratching. There's a lot going on. Again, for beginners, that might be quite a step in the, uh, the, the one step too far. So again, Patreon subscribers, the video that I'll uh, link to that is exclusive for you guys will have some good examples on that. Looking at palm muted strumming, there's a really good example from Brian Adams. His ultra famous song, Summer of 69, starts off with a D major chord, palm muted, with some accents, so taking in the previous 
example. So we have par muted with some stresses, some accents. Now again, if he started off the song just doing that, it would sound okay, but not really exciting. You want to grab your listener's attention, right? So that's what he does. Instantly, it's like, whoa, what's going on there? So use palm muting and then the opposite of that kind of stressing your chords to create a nice variety in the texture of your playing. So just before we move on to the next tip, I want to say thank you to the people on the screen. Those are my patrons and every month they get a lot of different perks. Not only do they get their name on the screen, but they get early access to videos like this before I put them up on my YouTube channel. They also get to ask questions every month about issues that they're having on their guitars or their pianos or music in general, let's say music theory, and I do my best to help them with that. And this is, like I said, this is a monthly video series, so I'm going to get around to all of their answers over the next year and hopefully help them out. They get a lot of other perks as well, such as PDFs and chord progressions, as well as scales and tips, and yeah, it's just a really good community. Head on over to Patreon if you are interested in that. Anyway, back to the video. Don't strum all the notes of a chord. So when I'm strumming a chord progression, to make it sound quite interesting and kind of smooth as well, I'm trying not to strum every single string of a chord. For example, if you know an E major chord, we know that all six strings need to be played for that chord. However, in a real world context, you don't actually have to do that. You can play any part of the chord. And we can come up with interesting ways of playing these chords that just adds that little bit extra. I don't want to say a sprinkle to a cake again, but it adds that little bit extra to your progressions. Take this for example. Now in that example, I started off by playing an E major chord, but I focused on the lower strings. I then went to play all six strings and then focus quite a lot on the higher strings. And that just creates this lovely texture which sounds better or can sound a bit more professional than So you can hear there's hopefully a bit of a, an obvious difference there. So mixing up how you strum the chords can really, really help. And going back to tip one, where you have down and up strokes, that'll link in perfectly with that tip. Now, when you do this, try not to overthink it. Or quite often when I'm playing around with some chord progressions, I'm not trying to think, oh, I must hit the lower two strings every time at the start of a bar, and then the rest of it, the bottom three strings. I kind of just improvise it at times. So I'm not really focusing on exactly what I'm playing. I'm just thinking, aim for the lower strings, then go for some higher strings. And if I play two of the higher strings and then the next time around three higher strings, it'll still be fine. As long as you've got the right chord here, it should be fine and you should get a nice sound out of it. So try not to overthink it. A really good example is a song called Growing Sideways. Now I'm going to put a bit of an audio track up now where you can have a listen to how he strums it and just try and watch out. There's low notes and high notes and it's a really good example of just mixing up the chord to get that really professional and sophisticated sound. I'm still angry at my parents for what their parents did to them but it's a start but I ignore and here's another example, Skinny Love by Bon Iver, classic song, absolutely beautiful. And this is a really good example of using different parts of a chord just to strum and mix up to get that lovely sound. And I've told you to be kind And in the morning I'll be with you But it will be a different kind And I'll be holding all the tickets And you'll be owning all Over on Patreon, I go over another example of a famous song by the Cranberries where I break down their strumming pattern to hopefully give you some ideas and to use as a bit of a practice tool to get the best out of your strumming where you pick the different chords. Tip five, plectrum preference. 
So you're going to take this one with a pinch of salt because plectrums are largely a preference. Uh, some people really enjoy the really bendy ones, some people love the really hard ones. I'm kind of a guy that sits on the fence in the middle, so I like mine that's got a little bit of sturdiness to them, but uh, has a bit of flexibility as well. In fact, this is my favourite type of plectrum. Um, it's a, a grey one, which describes my personality very well. <laughs> so this one is a Jim Dunlop uh, type of plectrum and it is a 0.73 millimeter plectrum. Now for me, I find this one gives me a lovely control over the strumming. It's not too hard, not too soft, and that helps me get a lovely kind of personal sound. If I want to go for light strumming, it can do that. If I want to really give it some, like a hard plectrum could, then I can go for the aggressive kind of style of strumming. And the only really tip I've got is to experiment. You can buy online loads of different plectrums in different thicknesses, so see what that's like with your playing. You'll probably find that they give different sounds and you'll just find one that you just think, oh, hold on, that fits nicely in my fingers and that gives me a lovely sound. So yeah, check it out. One final tip on plectrum playing is where you put your hand. So for example, you could strum over the sound hole, you could strum near the bridge, or you could get even closer to the neck of the guitar, and you get different timbres, different sound qualities. So I'm just going to take a chord progression, just a, a normal one, uh, with an E major chord, and I'm going to move my hand across the guitar, and we're going to see what that sounds like and how the change in the sound uh, kind of differs from different areas of the guitar. So you can see over here we get this very tinny quality. Over the sound hole we get a full bodied sound, you get the deep kind of tones and the frequencies of the strings, while it's also still getting some lighter parts as well. And equally here to a lesser degree you get a little bit more higher sound. But maybe not, you do lose a little bit of that brightness of sorts. And you can mix and match when you're playing. For example, sometimes if I'm playing, let's say, acoustic kind of campfire music, when I finish a song, I'll go for a nice light brush at the end like this. And you get just quite a nice different ending, a different timbre. So, experiment with your hand positioning. Tip number six, playing without a plectrum. So this one is quite an interesting one because there's lots of different techniques. So I'm going to be putting a lot of this on Patreon for my subscribers to have a look at. However, in general, if we're strumming a chord progression, you could use the side of your thumb here as a bit of a way to strum your chord. So you can see here, I've got my thumb doing that. And then just bringing it back over. So I'm using my thumb to go down like that. Now, if you're using chords broken up, so if you're not just strumming all the strings, you can use the PIMA method, which basically means your thumb's gonna be in control of your lower strings, usually your top three, one, two, three, and then pointy fingers for the G string, middle finger for the B, and your fourth finger for the high E string. Now that's a general rule, it depends on the song, as to what finger will play what. But if you use that as a loose rule, it can help. And I've actually come up with an exercise that you can try. There's a, a video and a PDF for, for this exercise, but just to quickly go over it, um, your thumb's gonna play the low E note, then pointy finger on the G, middle finger on the B, fourth finger on the E, and try and play that one, two, three, four times. Then move that thumb to the A string and play that. And then thumb to the D string. And then you could even reverse it. And that is a really good way of getting into the habit of using your fingers. Now notice how my hand is coming down at an angle there. I'm trying to bring it at quite far back on the guitar, so I've got my hand rooted in position. That can really help as well. Finally, an example, and again, I'm gonna put more of this on Patreon, is Hey There Delilah by The Play On White Tees. Brilliant song, came out a long time ago, bit cheesy, but they use finger picking for it.
And there is my thumb playing that lower note. Then the rest of the fingers are playing the high strings. So you can experiment that way as well. Tip number seven, posture and body positioning. So I've left this one to last because it's, to be fair, it's not the most interesting um, tip to give, but it's a really important one. Something that we often overlook is how you hold the guitar and your positioning. So first things first, don't strum too much with your elbows. Now it's, it's hard to avoid moving your elbow, but if you put too much into your strumming like this, it creates a bit of unevenness to your guitar playing. The guitar might move a lot and we might lose a bit of the dynamics, which are what I mentioned earlier. You might just get this loud sound. So if I'm just going like that over and over, it looks a bit silly. looks like I'm doing a bit of a chicken dance, but it also loses a lot of the, the quality of your playing. Try and have it more from your wrist when you're playing. There will be a bit of arm movement, that's fine, but try and get more from the wrist because the wrist gives you more control. The next one is going to sound strange. Your feet want to be firmly on the floor. Now, I don't have my camera set up to show you my feet, thankfully, <laughs> but my feet are firmly, well, my left foot is firmly on the floor, but my right foot, you can see it's a little bit higher up. I've got a footstool and that is firmly planted on there. If I move my legs around, if they're uneven, the guitar is going to move, it's going to potentially slip. It's going to be harder for me to have that smooth strumming pattern. Finally, having a nice firm position where I'm set up nice and straight with a slight lean forward gets me in position ready to play. I've also got my elbow nice and tucked in here. My guitar isn't moving anywhere. It's not gonna slide, it's not gonna dance around. I'm ready to play. So I have that kind of nice position. Try not to slouch, very, very easy to, to sit back and try and slouch around like that. Not very good for your playing. <laughs> The final positioning tip is a nice level guitar. Now you might see some guitar players play like this and that is kind of very advanced, very specific playing. So kind of sometimes I think uh, flamenco music and um, kind of guitar shredders will do that. That's for a very specific thing. Uh, but for general strumming, playing chords, you want a nice level guitar. So this hand, your left hand, doesn't have to stretch too far down. If it's doing that, it's gonna be really hard to play. If it's all the way up here, sometimes your hand can't properly stretch and you can end up causing a bit of wrist injury. So make sure that your guitar is generally nice and level. So there we go. Those are my seven tips that will help you get the best out of your strumming. Now, did I leave anything out? Write it in the comments below. Are there any other tips that you think, oh, hold on, this is really good as well. Let me know and I might make a follow-up video and we'll take it from there. However, if you want the extra bonus content, head on over to Patreon. Um, there's a two pound tier which you can get uh, with the extra uh, videos and everything I mentioned earlier in the video. So, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. This took a long time to edit and to come up with. So I'd appreciate it if uh, you give it a good old thumbs up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Tip five, plectrum pre well. Tip five, pre oh. <laughs> I can't say plectrum preference. <laughs> God, here we go. <laughs> Please. Tip five, plectrum preference. Woohoo!